Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this week I'm going to talk about deconstructors in C Sharp. Now this is a feature that I honestly don't see being used enough. It's a really handy feature that can really clean up your code, but maybe people just don't know about it because it has a confusing name that can be mixed with another C Sharp name, the destructor, and then you don't exactly know what it is, how it works and how you can use it. It's really truly awesome and in this video I'm going to show you exactly how it works in all of its glory and how you can extend it to ultimately write cleaner code. If you like the content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's start from the basics. I have just a blank project here. And what I want to do first is I want to create a, a class here. So I'm going to say public. And yes, this could be in its own file, but I'm going to keep everything in one file uh, for demo purposes. So let's say I have a public class here, a person, and we're going to add a couple of properties here. We're going to add a full name here and I'm going to change that to a string and then let's add a date of birth which is date only so date of birth right nothing fancy let's also turn this into init only because I don't need to mutate those values and also let's make this like this so we have a person class now let's initialize a version of it so let's say person or even let's say nick equals new person and let's add my full name here and let's also add a date of birth so this is the new date only that was added in C sharp 6 so let's say, uh, yeah, you know, just I won't put my actual date of birth here, but close enough. So we have that here. And then if we wanted to use that full name and the date of birth in our code, we might, you know, do something like this where name dot full name and then date of birth. Right here you go. And then you might actually even use that to write line something. So let's say the name is and then the actual name here. So let's say a full name and then born in, and then we're gonna put the date, so date of birth, and let's just add this fella here to format it. So if I was to use that and print it, it would print the following, right? The name, and then the month and the day. That's the ones I'm selecting here, the year we're dropping off. Now, here's where deconstruction comes in. These two properties, because to my eyes, this is like a data contract, but it doesn't have to be, but just as an example, it would be nice if I could do this in one line, you know, if I could declare these two variables just instantly. Now, someone might say, hey, Nick, why don't you just, you know, do this and then you don't have to deal with anything fancy. Well, the reason why I do that is because from use case to use case, this might be like a, a good practice to do, especially for clarity of code. Like if this or this were very long names, very descriptive, it could get convoluted if you mix them and match them in um, a template here like this one. So for that reason, we split it. Now, what I can do actually to make this simpler for me is create a deconstructor. So what is a deconstructor? Not to be confused, by the way, with a finalizer or a destructor, which looks like this. It, this is not that. That's a destructor or finalizer. What we're going to talk about is a deconstructor. And what this is, a public void method called deconstruct. Yes, it's kind of a magic name. And you can have out parameters, so out and then string full name here. And then out date only date of birth. Right, so it looks like this. Let me move this away from my face. And now I can say, I can actually set those out parameters and say full name equals full name and then date of birth equals date of birth. And what this does is it allows me to do the following. I can say var full name comma var date of birth equals Nick. And I can delete that. And now look, all of a sudden those two lines went away. I'm just pointing to that original thing. And in fact, if you want to be like, oh, why don't you just do this? You know, I can just comment this out and do it at the very beginning. And I don't even have to have Nick. Sure, you can, but just for clarity here, I'm going to split it just in this video. So now you can do this. And as you can see, when I uh, debug my code, I'm actually going to step into this method, which, you know, that doesn't seem to be a method here. This just looks like magic. But when I step into here, it takes me into that deconstruct method because it detects the name, it knows what it is, and it sets the variables. These out parameters don't have to be a one-for-one -one match to your properties. You can actually out anything you want. It's completely up to you. And as you can see here, this will create these two variables, date of birth and uh, uh, full name, and then we get the answer, 
back in the console, which is the same thing. So that way we can write less. And in fact, the C-sharp team has actually optimized this and they're like, you don't need two vars here, just write it like this, var in the beginning and then deconstruction here. And that's it. If you don't need one of those parameters because you might not always own the deconstruct method, you can discard them by using the discard operator, which is just an underscore. And now you don't have to worry about this. Um, technically, you could discard everything, but I don't know why you would do that. So yeah, you know, keep something. Now, the interesting thing about this is that deconstructors are actually a part of many things in the language already. Let's look at the following. I'm going to create a dictionary here and I'm going to say just new dictionary. And I'm going to have a string and an int. And this dictionary will have, let's say, one entry here. Again, my name and then a number which I don't know what it's supposed to represent, just a number. And then if I get the first entry here, which is dictionary.first, this is a key value pair of those types. So technically, I could actually split this to a key and a value. And as you can see, this is acceptable code. The deconstructor exists on the key value pair level. And when I didn't want to do that, and when I step over this, as you can see, key and value are set. So deconstructors are already part of many things in the language. Now, let's take this a step further because it would be nice, for example, you know, we have this date of birth up here. And let me just move it over here. DOB equals this, right? It would be nice if I could deconstruct uh, the date only element, the date only struct into its variables to use. So it would be nice if I could say year month day equals DOB. But um, that's, you know, this thing is part of the uh, .NET library. I can't really, you know, change anything about this. This exists outside of my scope and it doesn't have a deconstructor. So tough luck. Actually, in case you missed it, this was a setup for a feature called, well, you can actually have extension methods on that thing. You can do the following. You can say public static class and say like deconstruct extensions or deconstruction extensions. And then you can have a public static void method called again, deconstruct, right? But now we can deconstruct externally on that date only struct. So we can say this date only, date only, and we can out the parameters we want. So first I want the year, then I want the month, and last I want the day or day. And then the same way you did before, year equals date only dot year, and the same for the rest, month for month and day for day. And now magically, that code works. And yes, indeed, it is stepping in here. Let me just prove this to you real quick. I'm going to debug my code, get all the way down here and then step into this call. It takes me in the extension method deconstructor. It allows me to set those variables and then I can use them anywhere I want, just like that. And this is very handy when you don't actually own the class or the struct, you can do that. Lastly, and this is sort of like the expected behavior to be honest, but you can deconstruct tuples as well. So you could have down here a tuple or something that returns a tuple, which is string name and then int age. And it's like get person details, I don't know, something like that. And then you can return uh, Nick Chapsus and then the age. And you can have something like this. You can, by default, you would have the following. You'd have person equals get person details. And you can clearly do, you know, person dot age or person dot name because it detects those values from the tuple. But you could also deconstruct this by default into um, Nick name and then Nick. And this is again positional. So string, string, age, age. And if you don't like something, discard it. This all works. Fine. Now, the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the record type. So record types were added in C sharp nine, and you can have something like this. You can have like a public record book, and this book can have like a string um, title, and then maybe like a string. I, what's that ID in the books? Oh, ISBN. Yeah, sure, ISBN. So you can have something like that, right? Uh, this should be capital. I mean, this can have proper case ISBN. Fine, fine, fine. So you can have that. And what you can do in records by default is you can deconstruct. 
So you can have title and ISBN here simply by doing new book. This is a title and then some ID, I don't know. And then you get, as you can see, positionally, the, the title first and the ISBN. The reason why this happens by default is because internally record does implement the deconstruct method. I really hope as I was talking about this feature that all the light bulbs in your brain were just lighting because this can be applied in so, so many places and I think it's way better in most cases, maybe not all of them, but there is definitely a lot of cases where this can really make your code pop a lot more. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making the videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.